Current wireless chargers all depend on a transmitter, which are connected via a wire. For the transmitter to work, the device needs to be charged on top of the transmitter as shown in the following picture. As we can see here, these three devices are being charged wirelessly, but there is still a cable on the table. Also, current wireless transmitters stop working as soon as the device is lifted just a few millimeters off the charger. Our wireless charger, on the other hand, would require absolutely no cables on the desk, giving the customer a workplace free of cables and freeing up that extra space. Our device would allow anyone on the table to use their device while they are being charged wirelessly from underneath the table. This device will be able to charge any device up to 3 inches away, so you don't have to modify or cut into your beautiful desk. We will be implementing our idea on a wireless menu that could be used for restaurants or bars. This wireless menu will be charged from underneath the table, removing the charger from sight. It will also have a set of LEDs to light up the menu, making it look more appealing. A very important feature of this menu is that it will be able to charge up to two devices through USB ports. This wireless menu would be able to keep charging the customer's devices when lifted off the table due to an integrated battery. The main concept behind our wireless menu is known as loosely coupled wireless power transfer, which relies on resonant frequency of a circuit. The resonant frequency is the frequency where the maximum power transfer occurs. For example, on the right, we have a chart which shows the maximum voltage output at a frequency of 10.1 kHz. This output is just underneath 9.9. .9. And the receiver on the other hand is getting right about seven, a little under 7.2 amps. When we look at the block diagram of our transmitter and receiver, we see that it first starts off with a step of transformer, changing the voltage from 120 to 240. That voltage then goes ahead and passes through rectifiers, which makes it from AC to DC. Then we go ahead and see that we have switching transistors. These switching transistors set our frequency at about 80 kilohertz. This frequency then goes through a high frequency transformer, which outputs the current and through a transmitting wire. That transmitting wire is then able to create a magnetic field. That magnetic field then interacts with the receiving coil to induce a current. This current goes into a battery. That battery is also able to be charged externally via a micro USB. Also from the battery, we are able to go ahead and charge other people's devices through the USB outputs. We can also see that the battery is the one that supplies the voltage to the microcontroller. This microcontroller is the one that controls the LED display. Here is one application that we have found very interesting. It's called an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. This defibrillator goes implanted into a human body that has to go into surgery. This monitors and treats improper signaling in the heart. There are about 133,000 procedures done annually. When the battery is depleted, of course, the person has to go back into surgery. That is why implementing this type of technology into this medical device would allow the customer not to have to go back into the surgery room, but be able to charge the battery wirelessly. Thank you for watching.